The title of his presentation today is Let There Be Light, a Reflection on the Theological and the Theatrical. Eric was part of the Continuum Scholars Faculty Development Program this summer, an interdivisional cohort of pre-tenure faculty members who we all met during the summer to discuss theological perspectives on the vocation of scholarship and the current state of theological reflection, reflection and engagement in research fields and disciplines. Um, we're glad you're here for this in our first continuum lecture ever in, uh, in such an auspicious location as the Duet Main Theater. <laughs> now, each participant in continuums is asked to craft a vocational biography. And here's a bit of Eric's. So, Eric earned his BA in theater from Hope College in 2006. When he started his undergrad, his focus was acting, but his experiences there expanded his interest to directing and lighting. Uncertain whether he would pursue graduate school for theology, directing, or lighting design, he spent nearly the next decade in Chicago working with a variety of small theater companies and holding assort uh, assorted day jobs, including three years of fundraising for Steppenwolf Theater Company. Now, in 2018, he earned his Master's of Fine Arts in Lighting Design and Technology at the University of Illinois. And during graduate school, Eric found himself back on the campus of Hope College as the production manager for Hope's summer repertory theater during the 2017 and 2018 summer seasons. He then spent a year in the Villages, Florida, where he worked for the Sharon L. Morse Performing Arts Center as their lighting director, hosting world-renowned performers, including classic rock bands, dance companies, and Broadway touring companies. And I hope he collected a lot of t-shirts that are good too. <laughs> yeah, he returned to Hope College once again in the fall of 2019 to join the faculty of both dance and theater. Um, if you know Eric, you know he is passionate about what he does uh, and what he gets to do in places like this. And what a wonderful communicator he is about this to uh, students and, and lay people. So it, it, was a, it was a joy to have Eric and his energy with us last summer, and uh, I hope you'll join me in welcoming him today. Thank you. Yeah, I can just, I'll just pop that off. All right. I get my little lapel mic, so this is just hanging out here. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining on a Wednesday afternoon when I know it's not always the easiest to get away from all of the other many responsibilities we all have, so I uh, very much appreciate you. Um, making the time. Uh, so uh, this is a this is an interesting talk to uh, compose. Uh, it's a lot of balance, a bit of a balancing act. Uh, the, the goal is to talk about uh, my past, my upbringing, uh, my connection to my faith, my connection to my current work and research, uh, and how my work and my research reflect my faith and vice versa, and uh, and at the same time brag about myself. Um, and uh, that's all. Uh, uh, Oh, well, I'm better at that than some, I think. Uh, but, um, but, it's, uh, but that's still not an easy thing to, to, to try to thread the needle on. So here's, here's sort of the, the structure we're going to try and get, get through here. Um, first of all, that little fella on the, uh, on the left there, that's Lego Eric. He was on the uh, advertisements for this, for, for this lecture. Um, uh, this started as a thing in graduate school as a way to chronicle uh, my life without taking a selfie everywhere. Uh, whenever possible, we are dressed as similarly as possible. This morning, I forgot to change his outfit. So he's wearing a, the hoodie I was wearing yesterday. Uh, but this is Lego Eric. Um, you can follow at Lego Eric on Instagram. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, don't zoom. There we go. All right. Yes, yes. Good student work in the background there. Very good. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is sort of the, the, how we're going to tackle this thing. We're going to go through, sort of talk about upgrading background faith foundation, uh, sort of expanding a little bit on the, the vocational biography that, that Andy read, read and opened up for us. Um, how I found lighting, my growth as a lighting designer in, in, and as a person of faith, uh, and then my current research and how that connects to my faith. Um, so uh, the, the other trick here is that uh, ac in, within the worlds of academia, uh, faculty like to talk about, about, about our research. In the arts, we call that creative works. Uh, this is where the, the arts fits into academia, sort of square ped, round hole kind of thing, uh, but we've managed to make it work and, uh, and we belong here. So it's fun to get an opportunity to, to share that in, in this particular ang angle. Um, so yeah, 
uh, as a lens to, for, for this, part of the reason when, when we started talking about when I would do this lecture, I said, could we do it specifically the weekend between opening weekend of Silent Sky that's happening in the DeWitt Main Theater and closing weekend of uh, Silent Sky that's happening in the DeWitt Main Theater? Convenient time to say, if you'd like to come see Silent Sky, it was running Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> Featuring some talents of those in the back of the, back of the room. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, and I did that because my research is my creative works, and this is a sample of some of that world. Uh, and so we'll use that as a lens a little bit later on in the lecture. So, uh, our current show is Silent Sky, and there's some really wonderful text in this show. This, uh, this, this uh, show is, uh, highlights the work of a scientist, uh, a real-life scientist studying astronomy, studying light, studying stars, uh, and it's remarkable that some of this text um, I am not often someone who just from reading the text is moved to a tear to their eye. And I don't know if it's because this is tied with theology or tied with art or tied with the fact that it's all art about light. Uh, but I uh, am moved by this, by this speech. Uh, so the Henrietta, the main character, she sort of pushes against faith. She doesn't reject it, but she pushes against it in interesting ways. And I think I see a kindred uh, spirit in Henrietta for myself. My approach to faith is, um, is rich and nuanced and pretty liberal. And I'm okay with the fact that other people aren't that way, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, so uh, the, this text from the show, heaven, this is what, what actually starts the, the text of the show. I could just turn it over to Katie, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it down here. Um, so uh, heaven's up there, they say. Oh, and by my no means take this as a line reading, please and thank you. Uh, <laughs> heaven's up there, they say. Pearly clouds, pearly gates, they say. They don't know much about astronomy, I say. The science of light on high, of all that is far off and lonely and stuck in the deepest dark of space. Dark but for billions and billions of exceptions. And I insist on the exceptional. I really like that last phrase. So the title of this lecture is Let There Be Light. Uh, let's borrow another biblical, biblical phrase in the beginning. Uh, so in the beginning, so here's just a little bit of uh, sort of where I come from. Uh, my parents are in, the, 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 in attendance today, Tom and Wendy Van Tassel, the, 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 right there. Um, so my folks uh, uh, co-pastored a congregational church in Northwest Iowa, Iowa for the last 23 years. Uh, before that, we were in Lansing, Michigan, uh, where they both worked for a congregational church there. Uh, uh, Dad was ordained at uh, Yale Divinity School for, uh, after studying at Yale Divinity School. Mom studied at Western Theological here. Um, and uh, they met at Hope College, hence the uh, schnazzy Hope College uh, letterman's jacket there. Um, th that's me and Dad on the, uh, probably out further on the ice than Grandma would have liked us to be on Lake Michigan. Um, uh, the, the, I'm the fellow on the far left there with the really high, anchor, high pants and the white socks with the loafers. Um, that's a good look there with my sister. Uh, and uh, 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 my folks retired in 2020 uh, and actually moved here to town, uh, which has been fantastic. Uh, that picture on the bottom there is the, uh, the baptism of uh, my son, Grayson. Um, so uh, we... Uh, and also you can see my wife there as well, but she's not really the, in the beginning part. Um, <laughs> um, but I say all that to say that I grew up in a, a household where faith was, a, was an active and vibrant part of our, uh, uh, part of our lives. Uh, and along those lines, uh, so were the arts, uh, the involvement with community theater, involvement with uh, choirs, all of these things were things that were demonstrated as being vital and important to me. Uh, and became a major part of my life as well. Uh, and having grown up with uh, ministers as parents, as mentioned in the vocational biography thing, we'll get to that part a little bit later, that was always sort of in the back of my mind as a potential path for me. Uh, I ended up going to college here at Hope College. Here's a, a few photos from freshman year specifically. Uh, that picture on the bottom left there, that is uh, from Carousel, and that's put from the Dream Ballet in Act Two of Carousel, my first show of my fall, my freshman year, uh, in which I played like a kid 
jumping around and doing cartwheels and stuff. Very silly. Um, uh, but I was in 12th Street Harmony. I was, had a, gr a good group of friends. Um, I continued throughout uh, that, that time at first thinking I was an actor. Uh, during my time at Hope, I came in as an actor. I'm the guy with the long hair on most of these. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, was proud of my work as an actor, but also was discovering that I was good at other stuff as well. I was finding other, uh, other interests and other passions uh, through the power of a BA program at a liberal arts college. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I ultimately, uh, by the time I was a senior, uh, was working uh, primarily doing work as a director and a lighting designer. Uh, that bottom right image there is from uh, production of Strider my senior year that I co-directed with a student and a faculty member. Uh, the bottom left is a uh, ill-advised uh, student production of Jane Eyre the Musical, which is far too big a show for a student, <laughs> student group to do, but uh, ambitious, and I think it's telling that uh, the design team for that show, I think all of us went off to grad school and are making a, a career as, uh, as professional artists in one way or another. Um, so if you, if you do the big flex as a student, sometimes it pays off well. Uh, and then that, uh, so I designed lights on that production, and then the top center there is a uh, main stage faculty produced show, right up here, uh, that I ended up co-designing the lights with a faculty member on. Um, so leaving here, I went to Chicago, and in Chicago I was doing theater and had a day job that was paying my bills, and I was doing uh, a lot of different things, um, mostly designing lights. I had interest in directing, but I was getting lighting work because I, that was what was available to me. Uh, but as I was starting to um, get opportunities to direct, I was sort of realizing, wait, what if I'm not a director who designs lights? What if I'm a lighting designer uh, who directs occasionally? Um, I, some of the things that uh, helped me sort of realize that were um, the, the little award show looking image there is from uh, uh, with my wife there, uh, the Jeff Awards, which is sort of the Tony Award equivalent in Chicago. They have equity Jeff, Jeff Awards and non-equity Jeff Awards, so uh, that's the union, unionized houses versus non-union. So I have a non-equity non uh, Jeff Award nomination, uh, which it's not just a nomination, it's not a win, but I know people that have worked in Chicago for decades and haven't had that accolade, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, but at the same time as I was doing all of this, I was thinking a lot about faith. I was thinking a lot about uh, where I wanted my life to go, what I wanted my life to be, what I, how I wanted to raise a family someday, what job I thought would, uh, be, would work well with that, and my upbringing had been learning uh, at the feet of two ministers. And so there was a part of me that thought, well, maybe I should go to seminary, I guess. Um, I had been, I, I, I had been, uh, Attending a variety of churches, uh, you know, I grew up in a congregational church. I went to college at a, a church associated with the Reformed Church um, in uh, in Chicago. I was attending a, a UCC United Church of Christ congregational church, um, and I had and then when I met my wife, I started going to a Lutheran church. And within the first six months of there, I played Jesus because um, <laughs> because uh, I, I think just because I could bring the, my own hair and beard to the role. Um, uh, but the, the NAPF HOPE thing there, that's um, the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches that I grew up in, um, has two national youth organizations. Uh, NAPF, National Association of Pilgrim, and De or national Association of Pilgrim Fellowship, uh, and, which is for high school students, and HOPE, Heritage of Pilgrim Endeavor. HOPE's kind of a weird through-line theme in my life, incidentally. Um, so Heritage of Pilgrim Endeavor uh, is a completed high school through age 26, uh, age 26 sort of youth group. Um, and I had served two different terms as president of that uh, national organization. And in doing that was finding myself feeling like I was being called to at least study theology, maybe to be a college professor. To, maybe I don't want to like have a flock and be a minister, but maybe I want to be bringing my approach to theology to the text and, and to students and to expanding people's perspective. And uh, actually left the theater company that I've been working with primarily to, so, that, so that I could really seriously look at going to graduate school, going to seminary. I was actively studying, looking at seminaries, was visiting places while I was also getting more opportunities to direct. Uh, and I ended up with, or to design lights and, uh, and actually to direct as well. And so I ended up in a situation where I ended up, I remember calling my parents in tears, feeling like I was letting people down by choosing the wrong thing. Uh, 
that I had said I was going to be a minister, or I had said I was going to go study theology. And what if, so what, if, what if I think I'm not supposed to do that now? What if, it, what if theater's not done with me? What if I'm not done with theater? What if I'm supposed to do this other thing? And why would I do that? And why wouldn't I do that? And, that's, uh, and that was really hard. And to feel like I was letting down people that had seen my path and had been excited for me to follow that path. Um, and ultimately, let there be light. Uh, I wasn't making the wrong choice to stay I'm not going to go to seminary now. It's not to say I might never do that, but I'm not going to go to seminary. I'm going to keep doing this. Theater's not done with me. I'm not done with theater. I'm going to keep make, making art. I'm going to find new ways to make art. In fact, this is what I really love to do. And how am I going to stop having a day job and do this full time? Uh, a buddy of mine at the time said, uh, right now you have your Bruce Wayne job and you have your Batman job. You want to be Batman full time. And uh, I said, I do want to be Batman full time. <laughs> um, so these three photos are taken at three very different times in my life. The, the, the first uh, on the left uh, 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 is, uh, is the, uh, it's actually downstairs in the studio theater here, my senior year of college, uh, focusing lights for a show. Uh, the middle one is I'm the technical director for a theater company, a small theater company in Chicago. I built that set. That ends up being the set of the show that I get Jeff nominated for. I'm just goofing around while we're building the set and taking a silly photo. And then the, uh, the one on the right is a photo of me on a break during a work call in grad school, uh, where I had decided that grad school was the path for me. So why grad school? To get that Batman job, <laughs> I needed to do a few things. One was fill in some gaps in my knowledge. Computer-aided drafting uh, was a thing that I did not know how to do. Uh, they started tra training that, that here a little bit after I graduated. Uh, intelligent lighting fixtures, fixtures that actually move and can, can change color and things like this, I didn't know how to do any of that. Modern light boards, uh, your, your, go figure, your small storefront theaters don't always have those. Uh, so it was, it was all a matter of getting, filling in some gaps in my knowledge. Another thing was networking. Uh, grad school is how you get jobs in many cases because you can find work uh, from all the people that come through and you can talk to your new, a new additional batch of mentors who can lead to other, th uh, other opportunities. And then the last thing is earn those three little letters, MFA, Masters of Fine Arts. That is a terminal degree, which means I can teach at a college, like a small liberal arts college, uh, with a, similar to my own experience. Uh, so while I was in grad school, I got to do a lot of lighting design. I also knew that a small liberal arts school like the one that uh, I went to and that like, I was interested in teaching in someday uh, would require me to also uh, be able to teach sound as well. So instead of taking one sound course, I took four. Uh, and taking one media design, instead of one, taking one media design class, I took three uh, so that I would be able to fill in those gaps in my knowledge. Um, but this is also an, it brings up an interesting time. I was grad in, I'm in graduate school at the University of Illinois, a place that is not terribly connected to faith. Uh, and so why, I experienced the thing that I experienced in Chicago as well. Um, in both of those places, I was the most theologically connected person in most of my, uh, in most of my circles of friendship and community. Um, and as previously mentioned, my approach to theology is pretty liberal and, and uh, progressive, I would say. Uh, and so in a, co a community like Hope, where I might be on the fringe on one direction, I'm on the fringe on the other in some of these other communities. Uh, and that's okay. Um, the, that was uh, validating and was a way for me to find um, solace and uh, a connection to my faith in uh, being a steady rock in the current of the world around me. Yeah, finding my own faith in that. Um, uh, for me, academics and the lighting of, the, of things like this, um, this goes back to my training at Hope College uh, and also my training as a, as a um, student of my parents, <laughs> which is finding the theological in the theatrical. Um, when, I, when, we, when my family watched a movie uh, at the movie theater and on the way home, we didn't just talk about like, I like the part with the explosion, or I like the part with the big kiss, or I like the part with whatever. We talked about themes, we talked about messages, we talked about allegory, we talked about all these things. I think it made me a good academic as well, made me good at looking, bre breaking apart things uh, th uh, artistically and being able to speak to them in an interesting way. Um, and then at a liberal arts college like Hope, I had, we had done the same. 
uh, I, I like uh, my colleague, Dinah Robbins, uh, who I'm proud to call my colleague after having called her my professor before, uh, uh, previously. Uh, uh, she, she's fond of saying, I think my God understands theater. She says that when other people feel like they don't. Uh, that, her, that her God, and I'd say my God, uh, understand theater and understand pushing the envelope and understand some of those things. Um, so uh, that was important to me. And so even while I was in graduate school at a place that didn't necessarily underline the importance of God and faith, uh, uh, I was not alone there. I was not uh, isolated from that. I was comfortable. I was with my relationship with God that I'd had uh, throughout my training. Um, I also got to design not only for opera and theater like we saw in the previous slide, but also a fair amount of dance, uh, more dance than I did the other two things. Uh, so speaking to my research, again, this is a weird lecture to like thread the needle of like research in the past and the present. Um, so the sort of one of the highlights of that uh, sort of a capstone uh, was uh, a piece that I designed lights on, uh, participating in the American College Dance Association uh, National Festival at the Kennedy Center. Uh, and so I got to see my lighting work on stage at Kennedy Center in Washington, DC, which was pretty cool. Uh, and Lego Eric was there. Again, this is a w good way to avoid taking a selfie of, your place, of yourself anywhere. Just like bring a plastic version of yourself and keep it in your pocket at all times. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, and at the same time was finding a connection back at Hope College. These are some photos from Hope Summer Repertory Theater Productions that I worked on, uh, specifically as a lighting designer, though I sp spent two summers as production manager overseeing a variety of shows. Uh, and then I spent a year down in Florida at the Villages, Florida. Uh, the Villages is the largest retirement co community in the world. It's like 120,000 retirees. They're all very active and like to have fun and they want cool stuff to do. So we have uh, a thousand seat touring house that got to, where I got to work on a lot of different shows. Uh, I got to uh, uh, actually busk li live mix lighting for a bunch of really great bands that you see on the, on, on the left there. Uh, and then got to work with a bunch of touring shows as well. Again, there's Lego Eric with my lighting rig set up. Um, and then found my way back to Hope College. Um, these are just things from the last uh, ooh, year and a half or so. Uh, uh, here at Hope, um, it's been an absolute joy to return to a community that um, that helped forge me into what I am, and to call mentors colleagues, and to call those colleagues friends, uh, and to be uh, be here. Um, my work is tied to my faith um, in a lot of ways, but I think it's most base level. It's tied to my faith through the beauty of observation. Um, much of my faith is caught up in the glory of. God's creation and all of its scientific wonder and artistic wonder. Um, when I ask a student to observe the way the light plays across the gr grass or the way the moonlight s filters through the trees, um, for some of them, that will be a religious experience. And I think it is for me, often. Um, so one of the joys of my, of my creative works, of my research, is that there is always a new challenge. There's always a new play to solve, always a new dance piece to figure out, always a new artistic piece to understand. Uh, my research is not um, pushing the boundaries of new scientific breakthroughs. Uh, it's not pushing the boundaries of uh, writing the new next American novel. Um, uh, my, uh, or innovating uh, educational research for, or plotting how sunspots work. Um, my, my fellow Continuum uh, folks up here. Um, my work is, my creative works, my research is making you think and feel. Uh, and I have to do that in a variety of different ways, working with a collective in a collaborative art form uh, to create something on stage. Um, so there's always a new challenge, there's always a new design. Uh, and uh, whether those works are here on campus, uh, as we'll see in a moment, or off campus. Uh, a current thing I'm working on as a side project is the uh, Wonder Museum in Chicago has uh, a t uh, three new locations that are opening up soon. The first is gonna be in California. Uh, and a old colleague from 10 years ago or more reached out and uh, has been working with, I've been working with them to uh, figure out an in, uh, a lighting installation that uh, you can see there's a couple of, uh, sort of model photos uh, of a one-inch scale model on this side, and then I'm figuring out the pixels and how to control it all on this side here. Um, I've set that aside for a few weeks, and I need to dive back in now that all of our shows are open. <laughs> so it's been an, a, a fun challenge. So 
back to Silent Sky. Uh, another line from the show. I would like to say that I wish I could send you an image of the sky tonight, but I hope we never invent pictures that perfect. That would miss the point. This is a liberating uh, piece of uh, text for me when I started to approach this show. Uh, there is, uh, this show is about astronomy and the connection of science and faith uh, and, and all these different layers. And uh, the, they actually, I, I debated about making you all sing uh, uh, For the Beauty of the Earth today, uh, because that is a th hymn that is sung throughout the play. Um, uh, so I almost uh, made, made you all join me in, in song. Uh, but for the beauty of the earth, for the, be for the wonder of the skies, for the light, light with front of, for, for which from our birth over and around us lies. Um, this is, uh, the beauty around us is the sort of the crux of the show. This very sentence, though, is the two sentences, is explaining that there's literally no way I can capture that. I can't actually make the night sky come into this room. I can't make uh, the image of exactly what you, and the feeling you get exactly when you look through a telescope uh, at heavenly bodies uh, and translate that to you in here. Uh, but what I can do is try to evoke the feeling that, that, that comes from that. I can't make you see stars in here. I can make you see other things that evoke that, and then you can hopefully feel the things you might have felt looking at the actual thing. So, let's look at some cues. Uh, so, uh, first of all, before I get started, big thank you to Ken Chamberlain, who not only helped uh, get the so sound system all run and run, run, run today, but he's also clicking and clacking some buttons in there so we can look at some light cues. Uh, and as long as I'm thanking people who hit buttons, Natalie here is my student who was my uh, board op for this show, so uh, she did a lovely job. Um, so, uh, Ken, why don't we fade out that fader that's down here and fade the house lights as well. And I think we're in Q1, I think, which is pre-show. Um, so uh, we're just going to look at a few things here. Let's start with, uh, I needed a, a, some ways to make stars on this show. Talked about solving problems, so, so, figuring out new ways to, to, to uh, to make a show work. Uh, and so one of the things we thought about was, yeah, you could just use what we call gobos. Gobos are pretty simple th things. It's basically a piece of metal with holes poked into it to make whatever pattern we'd like. That can work well. Group 200 at full, please. Yeah, stars, that's fine. We can make some stars. That's good. That's a that's a pretty that's a pretty simple way to do it. That works very effectively. You put some you do some other nice things with the lighting on the rest of the stage. You pair some nice performances with it. You put some sound design on there. Thank you, Ken. And we end up with a really uh, really powerful piece. And that's probably what we would have done for a high school production. Uh, we are not a high school production. Uh, and I am interested in creative works and research and trying new things and using things that I've used one way in a new way. Uh, and so, the, so what we did was we explored the idea of what if we put some light, some more stars around? Uh, let's do, sneak this out and let's hit go, that'll take our house to half. This is when you get your pre-show speech that tells you to be quiet and uh, turn off your cell phones and such. Uh, let's hit go, this will pl plunge us into darkness aside from the light streaming in from outside. Uh, and you can go ahead and pull out the house lights there, Ken. Oh look, the light from the lobby. And go. Katie stands over here. Uh, and sorry folks that are bl blocked by the television, I promise I'll move in just a moment. And uh, she says the opening line of that play, and she talks about billions and billions of exceptions. Go. And we see a star, and we see a few stars. And then we hit go, and in a cascade of a random assortment of stars, they all come in. So we can play a lot with these. Part of the challenge was to hide them. Uh, there are a bunch of wires up there. Uh, let's go to Q1 for a minute. Let's go back to Q1. Uh, 
I've seen people do similar effects to this before. In fact, we, we used these very things for a dance piece four years ago. Uh, but they weren't terribly effective uh, because they, the beams of light of everything else highlighted the wires. If you look at the microphone stand here, uh, the microphone stand is less noticeable until I put a, hi a highlight on the side of it, and then you, you really see the dang thing. When, you, when we just hung all these up in here, all you know, 125, 140 of them, whatever it is, uh, they were pretty noticeable. And then we played Hide the Wire, uh, where we just moved them, I turned on all the lights, and they moved, we had folks move them between the beams of light, so that you hopefully don't notice them when you first walk in. Once I've turned them on and, and blown the fact that they're there, oh well, uh, <laughs> I can't hide them at that point. Uh, but, uh, the idea is that when you walk in, you look at the beautiful set, you don't look at the weird little, uh, little wires, and then they become this magical thing. We can use them in a lot of different ways. Uh, Ken, why don't we fade the, just the, the fader that I'm on and the house lights, you can leave us in Q1. Actually, yeah, the house lights are part of Q1, never mind. Uh, group 200 at, uh, oh no, sorry, group 300 at 75, enter. Effect one. we can do a little sparkle thing. That is too fast. <laughs> that is too rapid, that is too much. That is uh, potentially seizure inducing. And I say, that <laughs> slight, I say that as a joke, but it's actually true. We often put signage out front about things like that. Um, the, the, but if you do this wrong, it draws attention to itself, and not in a cool, ooh, magic way, but in a that's a problem kind of way. So this becomes the, uh, the, the challenge of designing, is actually dialing in on some of these things. Um, so yeah, let's look at, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to, uh, now I, I didn't write down a good cue with, the, with the effect, those in there. Uh, uh, Ken, if you just want to hit effect and when a, the little thing pops up on the right, uh, go to rate and make the rate uh, 15. If this works. We didn't go through this in advance. I'm supposed to leave, I'm supposed to wrap up before Q&A in three minutes. We're doing fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Actually, you know what? Here's a good one. Let's uh, sneak all that out. Uh, go to Q112. This is near the beginning of the second act of this show. Uh, and I can't remember if I have the stars twinkling here or not. Doesn't matter. Uh, but this is an unrealistic moment in the show. It's meant to be dreamlike. It's meant to feel like we're uh, on an ocean liner at night. Um, this is the joy of working on a show that has moments of realism and moments of uh, unrealistic dream and moments of uh, wonder. Um, that is uh, a wonderful part of my job, is getting to, to play in all of those spaces. Uh, getting to tell storylines with, uh, uh, and make, again, make you think and make you feel uh, using all of the skills that I have worked very hard uh, to possess. Um, and then we can take this sort of magical place and uh, we can hit go, which will uh, make the ocean below us subtly move as a person ghostly walks away into it, and then go. And we return to the reality of a mundane office at Harvard. Uh, we could look at cues all day long. I uh, would absolutely love to do that, actually. I'm a huge dork about what I do. Um, uh, but uh, I want to make sure that we use our time here. Um, uh, Near the end of the show, there's uh, a couple of lines here that I want to highlight. Uh, Henrietta, our, our, lead, our lead scientist, says, is talking to her sister. Her sister has sort of been the, the, the paragon, the example of the faith approach to the world, where Henrietta has been a, science, a scientific approach. Uh, and Henrietta is uh, saying, uh, something like souls. I know that you worry about those things, and I don't want you to think that I don't believe in anything. I do. Just a different kind of faith in grand observation, Margaret which is comforting, Henrietta, which is nimble. And that is comforting. My heaven is a cosmos deep in a gorgeous void. Uh, sitting in tech rehearsal a week ago, I had a realization. 
uh, without thinking, I, uh, I said out loud something to the effect of, um, I'm doing my favorite thing today, or I get to do my favorite thing today. Uh, and I was quiet for a little while, and I processed that, <laughs> and I realized that it's true. Uh, this is my favorite thing. That's um, funny and weird to, t weird to say out loud. Out loud. Um, God has uh, blessed me with, I won't say blessed me with abilities, that's not true at all. God has blessed me with the passion to work hard and become very good at this. And it is a joy to make art and make people think and feel and wonder and believe. And it is a joy to continue to work hard to get better at it and to continue doing that as technology changes, as shows change, as students change, um, as the stories we tell, tell change, I get to work hard to keep being good at this and get better and keep telling those stories to you. Uh, so to Henrietta's point, my, my heaven, I think it might look an awful lot like this. Uh, the very end of the show is, uh, a lovely monologue, and we do a bunch of cool effects, and we're not gonna, sh I don't wanna blow it all here. It's not as powerful without the lighting, and the, or with the, just the lighting, with the, you had the sound, you had the performance, it's a whole different thing. Um, but Henry Henry closes with, because wonder will always get us there. Those of us who insist that there is much more beyond ourselves, and I'll ex point out that that could be the heavens above, uh, as we've just sent NASA astro astronauts around the moon today for the first time in decades. Um, it, it could be God, it could be faith, it could be your connection to your family, it could be the connection to the tiniest molecule that, uh, I've got a, friend, a good colleague who works with nanoparticles on campus. Um, those of us who insist that there is much more beyond ourselves, and I do, and the re there's a reason we measure it all in light. Uh, Ken, can we go to Q1 and uh, uh, fade up the little special on me again? And uh, we've got some time for questions. Thank you again for all for coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Microphone you'll, you'll, around, yeah. fantastic. There it is. And that's on. We'll do so this thing. So questions for. Eric, of that wonderful Look at that. We said 35 minutes, I did 37. Pretty at, good. <laughs> right on cue. I'll, now I know that a all I need late. to say is go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Questions? Greg. What do you think light is? <laughs> uh, well, we could do like a really poetic answer, and I could, and I could say light is a way to tell a story. Uh, we could do a scientific answer and say that it's both a particle and a wave, and I couldn't tell you nearly as much about that as uh, Professor Williams back here could. Um, <laughs> um, uh, actually, one of the one of our, our first year as uh, as faculty together, uh, I, I guessed, I, I, or was it first year or second year? I can't remember now. Um, oh, it must have been pre-pandemic, so it was first year. <laughs> um, we, uh, he teaches an a intro physics class, and I said, do you have a day where you talk about light? He said, yeah, we have a whole unit. He said, do you want me to talk about light in a non-long-form like, like non algebra way? And he was like, yeah. And so we brought, brought them all in here. Oh, no, it was pandemic because we spread them all out. It was, <laughs> they were six feet apart. Um, and so, yeah, we can, so one of the things I think is magical about light for me is that it can be magical, that um, I can make it do things that feel like magic um, while are, they are all inherently deeply scientific. Um, so I think that's a, that, that it's a particle, it's a wave, it's a medium, it's a storytelling device, um, it is warmth, it's a lot of things. Yeah, good question. So I wonder when you go and watch theater productions, 
do you just sit and enjoy it, or do you Never. just think, <laughs> what? I could do um, this? Or yeah, no, I um, actually, uh, so uh, this last weekend I got to see Come From Away, uh, the, br the Broadway show that's touring right now, and it's in Grand Rapids at the moment. Might be gone now, I'm not sure. Um, uh, it's a phenomenal uh, play. There's a there's a recording of it on uh, Apple Pl uh, Apple TV Plus if you've got an opportunity to watch it. Uh, it's a, about um, uh, a true story of what happened to a bunch of airplane people on airplanes that got stuck in Newfoundland on September 11th. Um, and the lighting designer for that play is Hal Binkley, uh, who has uh, just a, like two, maybe two or three years ago died, I believe, of cancer. Uh, he also designed lights for Hamilton and lots of other Broadway shows. I got to meet him once. Uh, he was extremely kind and generous with his time. Uh, and it, I would never say that I knew Hal Binkley. I would say that I met Hal Binkley. Um, but I find him extremely inspirational, just as the, his work on stage and also some of the things that I've uh, heard him say, uh, either in person or, or on recordings. Um, I got to see um, Come From Away last winter. I was down in Chicago and made time to see, the, see it then, uh, and uh, spent half the time uh, crying a lot, uh, and spent the other half the time trying to figure out how they did the dang clouds. <laughs> they can't, oh, there's clouds there. There's trees in front of them, so it can't be from the front light. Can't be from the side light, if a side light would be flared. If it's from the other side, have the same problem. Can't be from the below because there's shadows on the top of the thing, which means that they so, okay, so they can't be from the top. How'd they do that in clouds? Uh, about halfway through, I was like, it's paint, it has to be paint. There's no way it's paint, it can't be paint. It keeps doing, and I deconstructed it the, the entire time. Uh, and then went home and watched behind the scenes videos and just waited until they showed the set with no interesting lighting on it. And yeah, it's just paint. It's just blue, <laughs> it's just paint. Um, uh, but, uh, and, I, and I was still watching the light and I was still watching the performances. I was still uh, deconstructing it as a theater professional. I'm not just looking at my thing. I'm looking at all of the things. I'm listening to the sound. I'm listening, uh, I'm doing all these things. Um, but I was really, extremely moved by that piece. So as much as I was doing all of that, I was also keyed in on it narratively. This last weekend, I spent a lot less time crying. I'd listened to the soundtrack some more. I'd seen it once before. And I spent as much time as I did the first time uh, looking at the technique and the artistry and how they did things. Uh, and things that the first time around when I was worried about clouds, instead I was looking at He's lighting the psych, uh, the, this upstage psych unit, the psych unit, this structure, in a way that um, is a big risk and bold and smart and different than any other show that I've seen. Lots of like essentially vert vertical stripes on the on the back wall. Could I? When can I use that? When's the next time I can? When's the next time we get a set that's going to look like that that I can use that same thing? Will is that actually a good idea or is that going to break the narrative of the show I'm working on? Because I have to serve. I can't just like. Ah, I like this, I'll put it here. Um, <laughs> that's not necessarily going to work. Um, so yeah, when I'm watching a show, I am looking at how they're doing it, how they could have done it better, how they could have done it differently, not necessarily better. Things that I might wanna take, things might, that I might wanna do differently, things that I might want to do the same. Um, it's, uh, it's fascinating and wonderful and a joy and a huge pain in the butt because I don't just get to watch stuff. So yeah. Other questions? How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing fine. Hey, is there anything exciting in lighting, mm -hmm. design or technology that's upcoming that you haven't gotten to use yet, but you'd yeah. love to if you had unlimited budget? <laughs> you know? So yeah, so there's a few different things. Uh, some of it's budget and some of it's time, right? Uh, so one of the things that I've uh, been meaning to do for a long time and finally this fall started to play, tinker around with was visual, visualization software. There's a lot of different visualization solutions. These, what I mean by this is ways to look at light before I actually put it on stage, right? So I can do things where I can do an artistic representation of something that I'm gonna use to communicate my idea to my design team uh, where I'm gonna like, hope that it looks like this, right? Somebody gives me a drawing and I draw lights on top of it and go, I think it'll look like this, probably. Uh, and then that's my goal is to make it look like that. Uh, and the rest of the design teams goes, oh yeah, I understand that that's your attempt at an artistic representation. Uh, there are other visualization software options where you can do things, and you can also do that with paint, you can do that with uh, colored pencil, uh, colored pencil on black paper rather than colored pencil on white paper, that's where you're drawing light rather than drawing shadows, mm, interesting. 
Um, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm offering lighting design next semester, by the way. I think I've still got space. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, so you can do all these things that are just sort of a, a, a dreamed up visualization of what it is. Uh, uh, here's what I'm hoping to do. Uh, but then there are things that we can, where you can actually like represent the whole set and all of the lighting rig in three dimensions in a, a virtual program. Uh, and so I started to do some of that this last fall, partially to prepare for lighting design next spring. Um, because those are tools that I haven't made a, a ton of use of yet. Um, but uh, they're phenomenal tools. They're powerful tools. If you rely on them too much, you could have a problem where you say, oh, I've done it all virtually already. Once we get into the space, it's just going to be, I can just T take that and plug it in. And that may not be true. If you don't give yourself enough time to edit and clean, that's not gonna be effective. Um, but every tool, when used effectively, is powerful. Uh, so that's one thing that, I, that I'm excited about spending more time with. Um, there's other things, uh, obviously, when it comes to technology and budget and things like this. Uh, I mentioned those intelligent lighting fixtures, those moving lights. We have very limited, we have a lot of lights that'll change color, which is great, uh, but we don't have a whole lot of moving lights anymore. Uh, we had a couple that we bought at a severe discount and they served us extremely well, especially for the price that we got them uh, for about four years. And that's, they've, they've run their race, their race is run, something poetic. They're done. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, if, if, if anybody would like to give me a couple hundred thousand dollars so I can get some new toys, that'd be fine. Other questions? We, yeah, we have time for a couple more for sure. Yeah. Mom, Dad, any questions? This is not a question. That's okay. Um, I play Henrietta in Silent Sky, and after the first weekend of shows, a lot of people have come up to me and said, like, oh, my God, you were awesome. You made me cry. Um, and I take the compliment, but I also really want to, like, tell them that it's not just me. A lot of it is being uplifted by Eric's artistry and Ken's artistry and all the other artists that went into this. So I'm so glad that there are people here who are taking the time to um, acknowledge the artistry because without them, I would not make you cry. Um, <laughs> you yeah. might. I mean, this, this is one of the things, though. I, I, thank you. I don't want to undercut that, um, that, those very kind words. Thank you for that. Um, it is a remarkable thing to have my art form be an art form that I think is often unnecessary. <laughs> uh, I think that... Um, uh, a good group of actors wearing costumes that have been thoughtfully put together, either fully designed by a professional designer or even just at their base level, thoughtfully put together by a student in an acting class, uh, can stand on stage and tell a story and make you feel things and make you think, and they don't need anything more than two acting blocks that they tell you are chairs, and they don't need uh, anything more than 12 chairs on stage of the set of Come From Away to tell you that that's an airplane, and that's a diner, and that's a Tim Hortons, and that's a, uh, an elementary school, and a number of things. That shows a phenomenal example of you could do that show with the 12 actors on stage and the 12 chairs that are on the stage, and no costumes, and no lighting, and you could tell a compelling story. But if you have the ability to uplift, to support, to uh, enhance, um, that's worth doing. Uh, and not drawing attention to yourself as the designer, not drawing, your, drawing attention away from the text, doing something that supports what the actors are doing and what the playwright is doing, um, that's, where you, that's where you get into design and away from strictly illumination, um, away from strictly clothing them and into costume design, away from strictly building a, st a set and designing a set. Um, and that's, uh, that's a hard line to walk, um, and I, I love finding it. Um, I don't know if I always stay on one side or the other of it, but I try, so yeah. Um, I think this text is really well written, and I think that it is very well performed, and I think that if you did it on a, a simple set with, with very little support, I think it would still be really moving. I just read it here and people were moved by it, and I'm just some guy. <laughs> Um, 
But yeah, if we have the opportunity to make the whole room look like uh, the inside of a telescope uh, and seeing the far side of the universe, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so. I remember when I uh, first saw anything with Hamilton, I saw the cast at mm -hmm. the White House yeah, yeah. doing some performing yeah. you know, at the White House, so no yeah. theater elements at all. And then to go see Hamilton mm -hmm. on stage and to see how it's done. And I particularly remember I had listened to all the music like everyone had ubiquitously, right? Yeah, yeah. For, but to think about how the um, how Rewind was done mm -hmm. on stage. Beautiful sound that design there. particular, and the, both you had both the movement and the lighting, how key they were yeah. uh, to that. So to your point, how gracious that you have actors acknowledging yeah. your work. Yeah. Anybody else, a last uh, question for Eric today? I think in art, we find uh, the flaws really easily. And one thing that I've had the opportunity to witness you do is openly and joyously marvel in a moment that you've created yeah. um, around students. And <laughs> I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Uh, a week ago, sitting right where Reagan is, I was sitting there and uh, uh, Annika, our stage manager, who's back there right now, was sitting over here where Scott is. And I did something and said, oh, that looks cool, I'm good at this, or something <laughs> that, to that effect. And Annika turned and said, Eric, I wish I had the confidence in my own abilities that you do. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I want to point out that, that I, 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 was, I was moved by that, but I also was, was, uh, wanted to point out that, Annika, you've also heard me say on headset, well, that looks like garbage. That's terrible. No, uh, eh, terrible. T take it out, take it out, take it out. Do, uh, oh, I, I don't know, start over. Uh, like, uh, I think that there is, uh, I'm a student, I was a student who grew up with really good grades. And I think a lot of Hope College students are really connected to grades. And they really want really good grades. And they get a lot of validation from grades. And that's important. Yeah. A, big, a couple of big sighs from, 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 from the audience here. Um, uh, and I think that that's good. That's, why, why would you not want to strive for good grades? That's amazing. That's fantastic. Um, uh, uh, tough news break. Uh, when you graduate, no one gives you grades. No one grades you. No one tells you via a letter grade that you did a good job. Uh, so part of the job of being uh, an adult is that you have to find ways to celebrate your successes. One is to really listen and really hear and really receive when somebody tells you you did a good job. Um, because uh, I think a lot of times people, especially if you are somebody who gets good grades and you think that you, you strive for that, people tell you good job all the time. Hey, nice job. And you go, yeah, thanks, whatever, and you move on with life. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, hear that and receive that. Because when you graduate, you won't get a little, nice little thing with a gold star and an A. You will only get good job. You might only get a lack of bad job. <laughs> like, literally, that is, there are jobs where you get a quarterly or an annual review, and that is when they tell you good job. And the other 364 days of the year, they tell you, keep going. And that's it. And so you've got to be able to listen and hear when people say good job, listen and hear when people say thank you, uh, and pump your own tires. Find, <laughs> pump yourself up. When you, when you think that something is good, when you think that you made a good spreadsheet, when you think you, made, you wrote a good document, when you think you sent that email that had just the right wording, that got the result you wanted as you manipulated your person on the upline of the command structure. <laughs> Celebrate that. It's great. You feel good about that. And uh, no one else is going to do that for you. Um, and so, when it comes to being an artist, you gotta do the same thing. Um, and then, if you do that, if you're good at doing that, then you can tear yourself down when it's bad. <laughs> if you only tear yourself down, if you only spend time looking at your critique, if you only spend time turning on a light and going, ugh, it looks terrible, why did I even choose that? I've never been good at this. That's a really hard way to go through life. So, have those moments. Ooh, that's bad. Turn it off. Try something else. Turn this on. Turn that on. At this level. Lower. There. Yeah. 
Let's look at it in context. Back. Go. Mm hmm Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm good at this. Okay, next one. And let's do that 150 more times, and you got yourself a show. So, yeah. Thank you. One more? One more? Yeah, uh, we can do one more. <laughs> a lovely question. Does Lego Eric put on pajamas every night? No. Uh, as evidenced by my comment at the beginning, I often uh, uh, don't make it down to the basement where all of his alternative torsos, which is all clothes are, uh, are stored. Um, so, uh, so he typically uh, uh, spends the night in his same little storage bag that he spends the whole day in uh, and then eventually gets swapped out a new torso or a new what have you to get a new outfit. So, yeah, a good question, though. Well, Eric, I want to tell you, thank you so much for this very good job for this time today, friends. Thank you. Can we acknowledge again uh, Eric's wonderful work here? And can I also invite you to come to Silent Sky? Yeah, yeah. 7.30, Thursday, Thursday Friday, Saturday. That's, that means today's Wednesday. That yeah, means yeah. there's a performance tomorrow, tomorrow night yeah, yeah. and this weekend. So we'll hope to see some of you there. Yeah, it really is quite good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks all. Have a good rest of your afternoon.